On September 24th, 2021, on a trip to New York, Anna and I celebrated our anniversary a few days early with dinner at this place called Adamix. This secondary project from husband and wife team Jung Yoon and Elia Park is distinctly and thoughtfully Korean, and they take stunning design aesthetics. I covered the opening of this place on the podcast years ago. They combine it with tireless product sourcing and warm collaboration, ultimately earning the team here two Michelin stars. Each course would be accompanied by a card complete with stories, ingredients, anecdotes, shout outs to folks like the ceramicist or even the graphic designer for the art on the card. Speaking of art, huge thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring a portion of this video. More on that after we talk about a glass of Paul Barra champagne to start. Shout out to the spoon as well, huge fan of this aesthetic. First bite has flavors of pumpkin, sorghum, foie gras, finger lime. This was texturally finessed and really developed in your mouth as you chewed through it. As I've shared previously, I do enjoy sweeter foie gras presentations, but this had savory elements that made it not feel too out of place at this point in the menu. This dashima tart has a base of sea lettuce and is filled with oyster and ganjang. I was expecting more sweet forward like the previous bite, but this was bright and had distinctly Korean flavors, which immediately calibrated your palate for the meal. I really enjoyed that element of this bite. A fun service element here of getting to choose the chopsticks that would accompany you for the rest of the meal. I went with these ones. Striped beak fish here with black truffle, yuza, and yangha ginger. As it turns out, the onion flavors here completely completely outcompeted the black truffle, and this dish would have been stellar even without the truffle mixed in. Next up, a bowl of sweet shrimp, eggplant, tomato, and salmon roe. Shrimp that's prepared like this can sometimes be slimy and have a film to it, but this was a textural wonder. All of the bubbles here between the different eggs and the seaweed and the jelly all popped at different times and made this really interesting to eat, even though on the surface it looks really unitextural. Shout out to the homie, Mark Rodriguez. You know we weren't gonna make it out of this meal without ordering a cocktail from him. We just entrusted him to make what he was excited about. The first one here on the left being a Rose Hill made with Rittenhouse rye, Montenegro, Fino sherry, a little bit of Campari and orange bitters. The one on the right being a Smoke and Honey made with Mezcal, Chinar, lemon juice, Amaro, and a ginger honey syrup. I'm normally not the one to order darker cocktails, but Mark is so skilled at combining different types of spirits, balancing acidity. I suppose this is a good time to mention that even if you don't do a full dinner experience at Adam X to go check out the bar upstairs. Next up, this is filefish, pen shell clam, and cauliflower steamed with egg, and it's topped with a sauce of the filefish liver. The banchan on the side here is fresh tofu with saltus, lacto-fermented nectarines, sea urchin, and citrus lace on top. This might have been my favorite fish course just because it had the meaniness and richness that I think I was craving at this point in the meal. We would make a decision on wine. We sought out the help of the Somme to help us land on this bottle of Nesterex Gin Tonic Sauvignon Blanc from the Czech Republic. This grape is usually one that I avoid, but the winemaker skills really made this a skin contacted tropical joy to pair with a lot of this menu. Here is Matsutake mushroom, Norwegian king crab, quail egg, and a galangal broth. On the side is a Matsutake rice and a mussel ganjang. This was one where the pine mushroom connection between the dishes was really the only thing that made sense because I honestly didn't know what to expect here between the quail egg, the beans, the tapioca pearls. I thought I was really gonna dislike this, but the flavors were fantastically balanced here. Next up, I changed my mind. This was definitely my favorite fish course, butterfish cooked in gochugaru, served on braised radishes and a sesame seed foam, golden caviar on top. This was punchy and salty and nutty while continuing the textural wind streak that the kitchen was achieving course after course. The banchan here is a crispy hot bite of herbs and tender greens from a farm called Girl and Doug. Inside is veal sweetbread and more gochujang. Any qualms about the butterfish not having enough texture variety was quickly put to rest here. It wasn't the best fried bite ever, but in the context of this dish's execution, it was great. Chicken came next. This is green circle chicken from Pennsylvania served on an iwaju puree, which is also known in Korea as the alcohol that's eaten with a spoon, and it's made from the duck or rice cakes. On top is toasted popcorn, coffee oil, and a spooned over black currant sauce, sprig of ice plant on the side just to add texture. On the side, chicken and ginseng juk or porridge, along with sea cucumber, mushrooms, scallions, and bamboo shoots. Anna did say, and I quote, whoever cooked that chicken skin, I want to hug them, end quote. And so if this chicken dish was on your station that night. Massive props to you. You really nailed the skin execution. Awesome work. The final savory presentation would be a surf and turf of sorts. This is mangalitsa pork rack with pearl onion and unripe blueberry. 
This dish landed with more Scandinavian oomph than Korean for me, even though there was Korean pear and wasabi and sunchoke and even vanilla from Mexico inside of this bowl. I did say surf and turf, and the banchan here is flounder CK, so it's fermented with minari muchim or watercress as well as some radish. There was nothing wrong with either of these dishes on their own. The pork was actually phenomenally cooked and it was allowed space to shine with minimal garnishing. I just didn't think it connected that much with the banchan itself. We did order a white lotus tea as we moved into Sweetland, we would steep this multiple times and enjoy it from here. This is a palate cleanser of sorts featuring huckleberry, hibiscus tea, panna cotta, pineapple weed granita, and variegated fig. I admittedly tasted each of these components separately and I did not enjoy this, tasting them one at a time, but after letting this melt a bit and mashing everything together, it came together quite nicely and I did end up enjoying this. Last up and a massive winner of a presentation, this is an ode to the importance of pine nuts in Korean cuisine. So we have pine nut ice cream, cinnamon curd, and pine cone syrup. I did say this was our anniversary, so they did do a quick candle for us. Thanks so much, guys. Really quickly, I wanted to come back to that piece I shared earlier in the video about how each dish includes a printed piece of art from a Korean artist. As a way to further the exploration of culture that Atomix is all about. There's no denying that art worldwide enriches cultures, and that's part of the reason why it's so valuable. I mean, look at this Basquiat. This piece sold for $110 million in 2017, and I did have the pleasure of seeing this in person at the Seattle Art Museum. I don't know about you, but it's crazy to think about spending that much on a single painting, but the people who do see this art as an investment. In fact, if we just talk numbers, the average price of high value contemporary art like Basquiat's has appreciated more than the S&P 500 total return by a whopping 164%. And that's for the last 25 years, no less. So putting that simply, contemporary art can be a kick-ass investment. And now you can get in on the action too with Masterworks. Masterworks is structured so that members can invest into a portion of a painting or paintings, which means you can get the upside of art as an investment without, say, needing $110 million. Creating an account on their platform is pretty easy, and all my viewers actually get to skip their waitlist simply by clicking on the link in the description. Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this part of the video. Speaking of costs, the dinner for two of us was split into two parts. So one for the meal itself of $587.93. That was prepaid on talk. And then we did have a secondary bill at the restaurant for drinks, etc for $265.57, bringing the grand total to $853.50. I would love to hear if any of you folks have dined at Adamix before. I'd also be keen to hear where else in New York you'd like to see a video from. Thanks so much as always for your attention. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.